Okay, so this in this video we're going to do the covers. So what I've already done is I've prepared some stuff already, so hopefully it won't take as long. Uh, page number 34 is the cover page for the large album. Not the largest, but the one next step down. So what I've done is I've got my template um, and I've, I've printed off page number five twice to line the covers. And how I cut my chipboard out is I took my template and I literally just laid it on top of my chipboard, traced it out, and cut it out. So I've already done that. And I've already finished up one of the covers. So I'm just going to cover it in white because everything's going to be matted. And there's going to be a spine piece that comes over here. So um, I didn't care that that was left like that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I covered the chipboard. Oh, I also cut a piece of three and a half inch wide by the same height as the, the cover. And how I got the three and a half inches wide is... This is the spine piece, it's page 40 that I'm going to use, and there's a half an inch in between each page, so that ends up being two and a half inches, then I added a half an inch for the front cover and half an inch for the back cover. So that's where I got my three and a half inch wide, and I even made myself a template, so for future use I know that, you know, um, I can just grab that and I won't have to measure every time. Alright, so I got those ready. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I attach this piece of chipboard to how I wrap. I'm going to wrap the edges of this cover. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac adhesive for this. It gives you a minute to, to let it, to move it around to get it right exactly where you want it. And since we're going to have the spine piece, there's going to be a piece that wraps around the front and back cover. Um, you don't have to wrap all four sides. You only have to wrap three. So I'm just going to flip this over and I'm going to line it up on one side. This is just an eight and a half by eleven piece of white cardstock. Um, I'm going to line it up like that. And then I've got I've got you know about five eighths to three fourths of an inch on top and bottom, and then the hangover over there. I'm gonna take my bone folder. And I'm gonna push it down pretty good, and then I'm gonna take that same bone folder and I'm gonna score right up next to that chipboard so that it'll fold easier. And I'm gonna tilt it up on itself and do another score mark because that way it'll it'll wrap around um, easier. So do that to all three sides. And then I'm also going to cut into the corner here. Just going to take a, a chunk out. Doing that scoring like that beforehand helps you figure out where you need to place your cut at too. All right, then I'm going to take my score tape and put tape on the edges. You don't have to use score tape for this. It's just quicker. Let's see. It just makes the process go faster. It holds it quicker. Plus, when I'm making a video, it helps too. Well, Okay, I'm going to do this side first. I'm going to dip my corners just a little bit. I wasn't going to do this part on camera because I've already done it in another video. And I'll link that video in the description box below. So if you want to go check it out, maybe it'll be in more detail. I think it was for the Stack the Pages um, videos. 
Okay, so now I've got three sides wrapped and then one raw side. And then I'm going to take the liner and I'm going to line it up for this side so it looks good from this side. So it's like an eighth of an inch all the way around. This is page number five. I didn't print out page number five. I actually used the, the template and laid it down on my cardstock. That way I didn't waste um, the ink and stuff because I didn't need any of the flaps. I just needed the rectangle. You know what I mean? That makes sense? And it's just as easy. I was gonna distress the, um, or ink the edges anyway, so just decided to do it that way. So I'm gonna, I'll use the Fabri-Tac again so it'll give me a minute so I can move it around. And that's it. So both of my covers are covered. <laughs> covers are covered. I'm going to ink these edges and then I'm going to get the spine pieces ready and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I've done is for the two spine pieces, you need two pieces because one is going to be on the outside and it's going to wrap around the top of the, of the covers. So it's going to wrap around like this. And then I cut another piece for the inside. So how I got my measurements was I laid my pieces down like this and I left myself a little gap there and then I laid my ruler down and I decided I wanted about an inch overhang on each um, on each side so I ended up getting to five and three-fourths well it's not quite an inch it looks like it might be just a smidge off but anyway that's where I got that so and then I just took the height of the of the um, liner page which is nine and a half approximately so then so it's five and three-fourths inches wide by 11 inches tall so then I'm going to center this I, I kind of measured in an inch on each side just so I can have like a, a guide you're not going to see it so it's not going to matter so I'm going to put that right there in the middle like that and I'm going to use my fabric tag for that And that way I've got time to wiggle it around if I need to. Oop, that looks good. So then one cover will attach right here. And then the other cover will attach right there. So for that I'm going to use the score tape though. So I'm going to put it on the raw edge side on the cover. Like that. And then I'm going to put it on this edge. I probably don't need to go all the way down. So I'm going to do that to both cover pieces on both sides of this. Okay. So since there's no pattern, since it's just white cardstock right now, I don't have to worry about which one's which just as long as I've got the raw edge well, facing this, facing the chipboard or up next to the chipboard piece. You know what I mean. Alright, so I'm just going to carefully leave myself a good gap so that it'll bend nicely. And I'll line her up and press her down. like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is you want to put tape No, let's see. You don't want it to get it in the gaps, so where did mine go? You just want to be mindful of where you're exactly putting that tape just so it doesn't get in the gap. That seems to always cause problems when adhesive gets in the in the gap there. Matter of fact, right here, I think I'm going to add a piece right there. 
just for extra I feel like it might need it right there <laughs> do that top and bottom uh oh oh sorry bumped you again <laughs> I've got when my camera's up on my table top here it's a uh, it's a little crowded because it's right above my head all right well, it's not right above my head. It's actually right in front of my face. How about that? Well, maybe not right in front of my face. <laughs> it's right there. Dang on it. Okay. So first I'm going to give it a score for making it easier to fold. I'm going to tilt it up on its side. I'm going to give it another score just to make it easier. Then I'm going to remove all the tape. Fold it over. Finish it down a little bit. Do the same thing on this side. Okay, so now for the inside piece, the piece that goes right here on the spine, um, it's five and three fourths inch wide by nine and a half approximately. So I'm going to ink this up with my archival jet black ink. Well, <laughs> can't get a hold of it. I'm not going to ink the sides because I'm going to be put in a pocket. Oh, wait a minute. Am I going to be put in a pocket? I think for just a moment. Oh, I did this one different. I planned it different and did it different. Oh, for crying out loud. Well, I'm going to ink all the edges up. I planned on putting a pocket, but to hold the, <laughs> the spine onto the cover, but then I did it different. Good grief. Well, let's just see where this goes. All right, so now I'm going to add more tape. I'm going to add it. Right here. I'm going to add it on this side. I might have to make some more pages. I'll have to look and see what I've done. I've messed up. A typical day in the life of Jennifer. Alright, so I'm going to see. Do I have any bigger? I have some bigger. Let me get my other one that's big. I have one inch score tape right here. Let's do this. Let's use this up. And that way, I'm not using all my quarter of an inch. That's my favorite size. I use that a lot. I'm going to do it like this. And then I have a three-eighths of an inch. You don't need all these sizes. I just happen to have them, and I just figured I'd use them. All right, and next I'm going to put tape all around the edges of this one. Let me move this a little bit more. It's kind of... I'm running out of space. <laughs> all right, I'm going to put tape all along all four edges. All right. So now I'm going to remove all the backing of this tape and stick it down. So I'm going to remove the tape backing, and I'll be right back. It'll take me a minute. All right, I've got all the backing off of the tape, and I'm going to line it up with that edge there and oops it crooked oh well it's down 
it is down. <laughs> I should have done the glue trick. That would have been more sense. Oh well. Well anyway, there you have it. Another boo-boo. And then I'm just running my bone folder in that crease because I wanted to be able to fold just nicely like that. See, this is going to be a thick one. It's going to be a big one. It's a big one. Okay, so now this, let's do the spine piece. This is page 40, and this is, this is not exactly how it looks. I have written on here, it says tape here, and it's got the orange stripe. And then here it's going to be taped here because we're going to fold it up like this. So it looks like this when you print it out. It looks just like that. So it's a half an inch spine piece. And so all I've done is I've actually just trimmed out all the way around all four sides. And then I took it to my scoreboard and I scored every half an inch. Or you can use your ruler. And then when to cut these off easily, uh, when I folded it in half like that, I snipped off the corner. Folded, snipped, folded, snipped, folded, snipped. So it made it, and those don't have to be perfect. Those are not going to be seen. Those are just so that the page can slide over top of it easily. So let me move this cover out of the way. Remember I told you I made a boo-boo on my cover because I was going to do it a different way. And then I ended up doing it a different way. So I'm going to have to make two more pages for this book. So I only made four. So with this method, you're going to get six fins for your pocket to slide onto. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to take if I, yeah, my three quarters of an inch score tape and I'm going to put it in the middle section of, of each one of these. Like, for example, I feel like this is one section. Um, it's like an inch and a half. That's one section. And then here's the second section. Here's the third. So I'm going to put, this is the, the part I'm taping right now is going to be the part that attaches to the book itself. So, that's why you, you definitely want to use some heavy duty stuff when you're doing this part because you don't want all your pages to fall out of your book at all. That would not be good. Okay. And then I'm going to flip it around because now I've got this fin and then I've got the part that's going to attach to the book. Now I need to make another fin. So I'm going to, that's why it says tape here. I'm going to put a piece of tape there and I'm going to attach them together. It doesn't even have to go all the way up to the edge. So let me show you what I mean before I keep taping that. I'm going to take this tape off right here and I'm just going to fold it on itself. So there is your first two fins. See? Just like that. I didn't score this very good. I noticed that when I was prepping, but we're going to roll with it. So so you attach them all the, all together like that. Let me run through here. Put the tape on. You could probably when you're doing this part you could probably use liquid glue because it's going to be inside the pocket page. So you could totally do that. You could use liquid if you wanted to. Okay. So then you just want to go through and make your fins. Press it down really good. And it's easier to put the tape on that's going to be on the spine first before you um, make all your fins. It's a little bit more chunky clunky. And I'll throw this one up on that. Okay. 
So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six fins. Perfect. I only got four pages built, but I got six fins. So I'll have to, off camera, I'll have to make a couple more pages because it's a gift for my mom. So I need to get it done. It's only a few days before Christmas. So let's see here. All right, so now I've got that piece ready to go. And so it's going to attach right here on this piece. Just like that. I think first I'm going to... I'm going to ink just this top and bottom edge, like that, so that I'll be able to line it up more easily. I think I'm going to, let's see, I need to, I think I'm going to take the tape off of, oh, I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off, yep, this, yep, yep, and then I'll use the glue. Okay, now I've got that tape backing off and I'm going to use the glue trick. Don't do too much because remember what happened last time I used too much glue in the last video or the, um, oh, I forget which order they went in. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to take it over here and I'm going to try to line it up. I'm just going to pick on and I want a half an inch on each side, sort of, roundabout. I'm going to tack it down there, and then I'm going to stand on my tippy toes so I don't get my head in the way, and tack it down there. This should be right, 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 it is, and there. So now our fins are now attached to the book, to the spine. Whew, this is going to be a fatty. Especially now that it's going to be six pages. Okay, now it's time to add the pages to the book. So, I think I'm going to use Scotch Quick Dry. You could use double-sided tape if you want to. Um, but I think I'm just going to use the Scotch Quick Dry. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good, um, strong adhesive. And if you don't want to use these spine pieces, um, you can always just use, like, um, Laura Dennison's um, Stack the Deck binding, you know, it has six fins, so you would just layer them on top of each other. You could use that binding. You can use individual sections of these. You can just go to your scoreboard and every half an inch, you know, you don't have to print it out if you don't want to. It just happens to be the perfect size um, to make your life easier. And, and you know, I just included it because I thought it might be helpful for some of you. Alright, so let's start. We're going to do, the first page is going to be this one. So I'm going to put glue on both sides of this first fin. Oh, maybe not. Let me unclog my glue. Okay, let's see if that works. There we go. Oh, jeez. Oh, that was a little much. My glue got a little carried away. Mm-hmm. Where's my lid? Where's my lid? Alright, and then we just want to make sure you have it the right way you want it, and you just slide it down over top of that fin. Um, you don't want to go all the way to the base of the book because it won't flip very nicely if you do that. So you kind of want to raise it up a smidge, a hair. Just a little bit. No big deal. So that it lays down flat. See, that looks nice. Alright. Now I'm going to get the second page, do the same thing. Alright, let's 
do the next one. You know, you don't have to build yours in this order. You could make your covers first and then build your pages or add your bases to them to the covers and then build your build your pages from there. You don't have to do it in the same order I do. All right, one more. I'm going to have to make two more. I'm just going to slide this last one on here. All right. I'm going to ink these edges real quick before I forget, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I decided that uh, I'm not just going to leave this cover white right now. I'm going to go ahead and, and put some pattern paper on the cover just so that it doesn't get messed up, you know, because white easily gets messed up. Plus, it's hard on the camera. So this is my book. Yeah, I've only still got the four pages in there. Um, so the reason this is a Christmas paper, it is Crystal Frost by Craft Smith. Pretty sure I got it at Michael's. Um, it's pretty cool. It's got gold and silver, and it's got sparklies, and it's got um, metallic-y, shiny stuff. Um, but when I did my flip through, uh, when I introduced you to this printable, and I did my, uh, to the DIY, I mean the, um, <laughs> the ultimate DIY scrapbook printable, my mom said she had liked this paper. She liked the album using this paper. Well, I didn't make the exact same album. But this is for her. This is her Christmas present, so I'm going to use the paper that she liked because I had plenty of it. So what I did was flip through. I found some pieces that I wanted. So I cut it down to leave a quarter of an inch all the way around. I didn't use one of my templates because um, I could have used page five as the liner, I mean as the mat for this, but it was going to leave like a bigger, like a three-eighths of an inch instead of a quarter of an inch. So I just wanted a quarter of an inch. So I just measured it and made sure there was a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I believe this one's like, the, the height of this mat is nine and a quarter by seven, I think. Right around there. But everybody's will be different, so don't go off my measurements. You'll just have to, um, what I do is I just measure both ways. I just measure both ways and take a half an inch. Off, of the, off the measurement. And so this piece is one of the large cutoff pieces when you cut your 12 by 12 down. But since the spine is three and a half inches, I had to take off a quarter of an inch off one side. So, but it's the same height um, as these. So I'm just gonna attach these down real quick and go from there. What am I looking for? Oh, my glue. I'm gonna use Fabri-Tac. Again, it says, walking in a winter wonderland. My mom um, lives, she calls it her acre, and she has some woods that she's made like a trails and stuff for her and her dog to walk through, so I thought that was fitting. So I'm just gonna attach this down. And I wanted the, the cover to be kind of a muted color so that I can add some pretty stuff on it and it'll stand out, you know? So remember, I'm, I left a quarter of an inch all the way around. Make sure I got that right. This is the front, yes. Isn't that pretty? It already looks nice. I know it looks kind of plain, but I'll jazz it up at some point. I'll flip it over and do this side. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, quarter of an inch. I love that fabric tuck because it gives you just enough time to move stuff if you need to. And then I'm going to do the spine piece. Isn't that pretty? It's got sparkly snowflakes on it. Okay. And I'm going to, which one's the front one? I don't guess it really has a top and a bottom. I'm going to try to get my quarter of an inch here. Match it up. Yeah. There we go. It's kind of hard to get the whole thing in the frame. That looks nice. Okay. 
so I'm going to leave this for now. I'm going to contemplate putting a pocket in the front covers. Whoops. I'm going to make two more pages for these last two fins. And um, so the next video, I think I'll just be matting everything and making it all pretty. Maybe I'll do the cover in the next video. I haven't decided when I want to do the covers yet, but I'll have to do it before Christmas, won't I? All right, well, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if there's anything you want to see, leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Bye.